This is a quick little video of the micro hydroelectric system here in Webster County, West Virginia. Uh, starting at the top, you can see the weir behind me. It's a four inch Schedule 40 pen stock, 515 feet down to the powerhouse. Most of it is buried, about 95%. As you can see, there's about eight feet exposed coming out of the intake box. And there's a couple places where there were dips in the land. I ran it through a six inch sleeve. So here's one of the places where there's a little dip in the land and you want to keep your pipe, your pen stock on a steady decline. You don't want any dips or high spots that can trap air. Air is bad news in a hydro system. Air wants to go uphill, water wants to go down. It will kill your pressure. You can totally lose pressure. So what I did here, this is a six inch sleeve under my camouflage. The four inch pipe is in there. Found a nice solid big rock, drove some 5 h rebar, poured a concrete thrust block to hold this in place. So that's what this is all about. Haven't had any freeze problems. This is my third winter. Been down 15 below zero numerous times. So keeping the water running is a big deal. But burying it, I think, would help the freeze issue. This is visible from our house. And it wasn't real pretty looking at the ugly PVC pipe, so we camouflaged it. Um, also, critters like to chew on stuff, especially bears. They don't know what it is. They yank on it, chew on it. Um, and to protect it from stuff falling on it, branches, trees. So it was a lot of work burying the penstock in this soil that is really good for growing rocks but i think it was worth it but it did add probably a few months to, to the system's total time to complete now this part of the pen stock there's a slightly uh, a small dip so i was able to do a retaining wall just treated plywood and 5 h rebar to keep the slope nice and even then it heads down towards some big tree roots so I built a long retaining wall there so I didn't disturb too much of the roots. Also, you'll see there's a retaining wall below that just to be able to work and walk in these steep areas, especially when it's wet. I would have rather have gone up that little hog back, that little ridge, but then I would have had a high spot and uh, didn't want that. Here's some uh, steps I put in just to facilitate carrying the materials down to the powerhouse where we at, where we're nearing. The electrical conduit runs down along these steps and then joins the same penstock, the same trench as the water line all the way down to the powerhouse. So here's the hydro generator. Um, it's called the Stream Engine ESD, designed by ESD. The owner is Paul Cunningham, Energy System and Design. Right now it's producing 380 watts. I've got a three quarter nozzle and a three eighths nozzle. That's about 98 gallons a minute total. And as you can see, it's just a nice simple diversion from the creek back into the creek. No impact on the environment in any any fashion, unless you had migratory aquatic life maybe, but we don't have these in this creek. So anytime you're opening and closing the nozzles on, a, on any hydro, you want to do it very slowly to prevent any shock to the pipes. I have Schedule 40, so they're pretty strong pipes. Maybe it's not that big of a concern. And when I, same thing when you open them, open them slowly. I have a three quarter nozzle on the right as you're looking at it, and a three eighths on the left. And it's producing 240 volt AC wild three phase, 600 feet back to the house, four 12 gauge wire in a half inch conduit. 
And the pad stock, we've got 47 feet ahead, which is coming down in 4 inch PVC. Got 515 feet of that. A quick overview of the controls of the system. Not as scary as they look once you make your settings. It's pretty much all automatic. I recommend a qualified electrician. I was fortunate enough to have Matt Sherald from Pinby Electric. That's power in my backyard. Uh, GetPinby.com if uh, you're anywhere near West Virginia. Anyway, here's uh, the solar coming in from the panels out on the pole in front of the house. These are just uh, disconnects. Here's our solar charge controller. It is the slave to the master TriStar hydro charge controller, which is also a diverter. Diverters excess electricity to the uh, dump load. Um, so the power is coming in. It all mixes in these batteries. Right now I have six, six volt Trojan L16 ACs, about 1300 uh, amp hours. They're six volt uh, two inch series and then parallel for about 1300 amp hours. Uh, an AC panel box, a DC panel box, and a panel box that controls uh, the hydro, also the solar, some fans and meters, and the diversion load. It all mixes the solar and the hydro in the batteries. It's a 12 volt system, so I float at about 13.7. Here's the inverter, which steps up to AC 120 volts for most of your regular household items. Uh, this is just a digital readout for the solar charge controller. Here's a readout for the uh, inverter. And again, here's the TriStar. Here's the transformer, because there's 240 volt AC coming in from the hydro. That's coming in right here, in here. It gets stepped down to 12 volt DC. In the, here's a disconnect for the battery, uh, the DC bus. Here's the main AC disconnect for the batteries to the inverter. This is a vent when the batteries are equalizing. Uh, the controls are in here. It's got a diaphragm, so it's one way. I try and use as much 12 volt as I can. Uh, a lot of my lighting, especially uh, LEDs. And as you can see, I still have some of the old cigarette plug lighters, a uh, stereo hooked up to uh, 12 volt direct out of my old van. This is a good example of the stream engine, the hydro generator, producing steam through the uh, induction stove, which we wouldn't have been able to use before when we just had solar photovoltaics. So this is just one of the many appliances that the hydro allows us to use. Um, everything from a dehumidifier, microwaves, washer and dryer, etc. But this is a pretty cool one, and I like the uh, new technology on the old.